from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 as we talk about your life and your money. Before we go to the phones, a couple of updates uh, right quickly. Um, Irony of ironies, uh, Zoom has announced that their employees must come back to work in the building. If that doesn't strike you as funny, I don't know what does, okay? (laughs) I'm just saying. And, of course, I've caught so much hell because I have said, (laughs) Ramsey, we work from work at Ramsey. That's where we work from. We don't work from home. We work from work. And, well, you're not flexible. No, I understand that humans need to be around humans and that productivity and creativity and vision go up when humans are in direct contact with (laughs) other humans. It's uh, it's a basic tenet of humanity, a human being, not just a human doing. Mm. And uh, so we work from work at Ramsey. All of us are in this building together, and that's why we get so stinking much work done and why we're so smart and pretty and all the things that we are. So there you go. So you're telling me the Zoom employees don't zoom in to their yeah they zoom out their, <laughs> now they got to zoom out get, to work yeah, zoomed out now they're now they're now they're going to zoom into the office is what they're right. gonna do, yeah. i just think it's i think it's funny yeah, i'm irony, sorry yeah um, it's just because i think probably because i caught so much hell about it yeah and so you, you know but the other thing on a more serious note uh john deloney and i took a call from a young uh widow last week in her 30s her husband had died in a construction accident and she was uh her home was in foreclosure and she was in tears through the whole call and it has tugged at the heartstrings of everyone who's listened to that call john and me included and um uh i had if you have heard that or are yet to hear it but you'll hear that i explained to her she's not going to lose the house Mm -hmm. and that we're going to get uh lisa our uh, senior uh, finan- financial counselor that works with crisis stuff on on the job here mm-hmm. and furnish it to her, take care of her, because as uh, people of the Christian faith, we're instructed by our book to take care of widows and orphans, That's and right. so we do. That's simple. And so we took care of her. Uh, Lisa's met with her. She's got all kinds of, you know, the chaos that was all over her life is starting to come into order. The house will, of course, not be foreclosed on. She had a a $60,000 mortgage on a $375,000 house. We're not losing that house, boys and girls. Okay, Mm -hmm. so uh, not happening. So anyway, we we didn't lose the house. Everything's going to be fine. There's a lot of details to be buttoned up. But just an update that uh, she's fine. She's fine. And uh, literally thousands of you have reached out to us to offer assistance to her uh, financial and so forth on the uh, different social media platforms. Thank you for that. Um, Number one, we have no way of organizing all of that stuff. We don't run a telethon. And so there's no possible logistical way we could. Mm -hmm. Number two, she doesn't need it. She's under control. We got, we got her, yeah. you know, a couple people stepped up in the community, uh, the church, you know, we're hooking her up with a church that's going to help her. We've got Lisa, who's got superpowers when it comes to negotiating with foreclosures and dealing with mortgage companies. And she has all of the, um, regulatory knowledge that strikes fear into the heart of collectors. <laughs> and so all of that. So we got, we got it. We got it. She's in good shape. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. But let me just tell you, the thing I wanted to bring up was thank you a, for all of you that reached out. And those of you that even thought, gosh, I wish I could help her. Yeah. You know, here's what we've always done in 30 years of doing this show. Cause sometimes one of these things elicits this kind of a response from our wonderful audience. Cause we've got great people in our audience. Absolutely. Is, Hey, what that means is, God is telling you to help, not her, but somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of folk right there within reach of you, whoever you are, that need help. There's plenty of folk that $2,000 will change their life. A $1,000 car for a single mom in that situation will change your life. Yeah. And $10,000 will do it for 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So this is why you get out of debt. This is why you live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. So what I'm asking you to do in this particular case is take the unction, take the, um, the spiritual direction you feel inside of you to help and go help. Yeah. You're not going to help this particular lady, but there's yep. one just like her down the block. I promise you. Mm-hmm. They're all over the world. And so uh, help. 
That's, that's the word, the, that, Dave. That's what it's for. Because here's the thing. If we the people take care of we the people, we can make the government as irrelevant as it actually is. You can put them out of business. I know that. Drop the that help, salary. Put them out of the helping people business. <laughs> that would um, alleviate a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, a lot of taxes. Yeah. It would alleviate a lot of stupidity, and it would take the power from politicians to buy your vote. That's a good word, So Dave. we the people taking care of we the people is how it's supposed to be done. It's called community. It's called connection, and uh, it's called generosity. It's a good me- muscle for everyone to flex ever so often, mm-hmm. and um, inviting you guys to do just that. And, again, thank you for your response to that lady. That was a heart-wrenching yeah. call and situation. It really was, and hopefully for the listeners it shows. You know, we talk all the time, Dave. This is a community. We're not just – People telling you, get out of debt. Get There are Facebook communities. There are people doing this with you, and they truly care about your journey. They're right there with you. And if that doesn't show it, I don't know what There's does. There's 500,000 people on the Baby Steps yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. I mean, the Baby Six Facebook mm-hmm. community. Yeah. And you want to get some advice? They will tear you up in there. <laughs> they will tear you up, but they, it's because they love you. Y'all think I'm tough? You think I'm <laughs> tough? Jump your butt in that community. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, There's there, you're right. There's a lot of interaction going on amongst uh, you guys, mm-hmm. our tribe, mm-hmm. us. Uh, this is not simply us barking at you That's on right. one end of a microphone and you on the speaker end on the other side. There's a lot going on here. And this kind of a thing illustrates that. It does. It does. There's, there's people out there rooting for you. They've been there. They know how it feels. And the chance that they get to jump in and help, they're going to take that chance. Well, that's how you ended up, you know, you and Sam ended up becoming Financial Peace University coordinators. Heck yeah. You don't go through this and not want to help somebody on the other side of it because it changes your lens. Now, you, when you walk out, you, you notice the person behind you in the checkout. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. notice, you start to notice things that you've never noticed before. And, you know, you see that person taking out their phone and checking their account before they pay. You see that stuff now. And so, yeah, you got to go back and help. Yeah, pay it forward. It, once you're aware, you can't be unaware. That's right. You know, it's it does open up your eyes and get mm-hmm. things moving. So, guys, jump in and do that. Just fi- find somebody to be a blessing to. Uh, the odd thing is, is that it'll bless you. Uh, The odd thing is, is that generosity actually does as much or more for the giver than it does the receiver. Uh, And it seems like Jesus talked about that. So there you go. Uh, The the giver is more blessed, you know, is what it amounts to. And so it's good. It's a good it's a good exercise. It's a good reminder for all of us that this is where help comes from. God does not use governments. God uses people to help people. It's it's his preferred tool. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind next time someone wants to announce a new program. This (laughs) is The Ramsey Show. Guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Last week, we put Dr. John Deloney's new book on pre-sale. It comes out October the 3rd, Building a Non-Anxious Life. The six daily choices that you can make to eliminate the things that cause anxiety. 
Anxiety is a symptom, not a problem, according to Dr. John, and he's exactly right. So, uh, yeah, when, if you want to not have the fire alarm go off, uh, don't take the batteries out. Put out the fire. That's the idea. And so let's do a little preventive stuff here. Building a non-anxious life. Does that sound good to have a little more peace in your life? Yeah, Dr. John can show you really how to do it. And uh, this book is on pre-order. It's $20, and we're going to throw in $75 worth of free bonus items, including the ebook, the audio book, and one of John's talks. Uh, all of that. Uh, for one price, because if you pre-buy it, it helps us with the marketing, and a bunch of you had thousands and thousands of you purchased it in the last five days. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. We appreciate the response. It's been explosive. And um, so, Building a Non-Anxious Life by Dr. John Deloney. Sounds good. Let's all it try is good. This. Let's all try that together. I love the book. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Yes. All right, Chris. All right, let's do this. Krista is with us in Little Rock. Hi, Krista. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, thank you for having me. My pleasure. How can we help? Um, my husband and I want to build a house. Um, we are currently, we have three kids. We're in about a thousand square feet. Um, one tiny little bathroom. And our oldest is a girl and she's about to be 12. That and sounds she has joyful. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's the joy of my life. Um, they can't stand it any more than we can anymore. It, suddenly, last year, it felt extremely small, um, I guess because all my kids are growing up. Um, so we want to build. Uh, my aunt is a realtor, and so we got um, a market value on our house, and we could probably pay off debt, pay off the mortgage, and walk away with, like, 40 cash. Um, the problem is we're both self-employed, which is recent. I was a homemaker before and worked um, kind of sporadically, and then now it's becoming a more of a full-time position. But he quit his job in October and is doing construction work um, independently now. Um, our income is going way up, but it's both self-employment. So yeah, you're going to have to have two. You're going to have to have two years of tax returns. That's right. Right. And our income was like um, 65 last year mm -hmm. um, with all of our side hustles and everything. That I think that was like adjusted growth. Mm -hmm. um, so How I feel like that kid? income's really you low. The oldest one's 12. What are the other two? 12. Um, the, her little brother, nine and four. Okay. That's how old our um, kids were like when we sold our house. Okay. And paid off the IRS. It was the last remaining debt from our bankruptcy. Because the IRS is not bankruptable. If you didn't hear, they're forever. Um, right. And so I got rid of the last debt and um, moved to a different school system was our motivation. We, our motivation wasn't to build. Uh, but we cleared up everything and had uh, a little bit of money, like you're talking about 30 or 40 grand or something. It wasn't enough to get a house. And um, we rented for two years. We considered that. Um, right now, our mortgage is only 455 a month. That's with the escrow and everything. It's up to you. Where do you um, want to live? You can't build. I was going to say, you don't really have okay. much of a choice. You want to live in a okay. little house because or you want to live in a rental house? Yeah, rent you would can't be build. double or triple that. You can't least. build. You don't okay. have two years of tax returns. Like with enough income? Well, if you, know, if you, if you can do it on the income that you're showing, you have two full tax years of tax returns already? I thought you kept telling me how recent the self-employment is. Yeah, the, the self-employment is recent, yes. Okay. Well, as of October for him. You have there, to have two years of tax returns. They're not going to count his income. Okay, self-employment. Okay. Of, of self-employed tax returns. Because you, quit, make you sure quit your job stable. and you open a business, the mortgage company doesn't think you can pay it unless yeah. you've done it for two years. Right. That's true. Okay. I mean, I... I I've been right where you, you're at, Krista. You know, Sam and I, we had our own business, and you have to be able to show the stability of that, especially, you know, just starting out, like you guys just starting these businesses. And even for your own self, I would think that I would want to know, okay, we do, we're doing this thing. It's stable. So even I would want the peace of mind of having those two years um, for myself, not just for the documentation purposes. We did not right. move. We moved kids exactly the same age as yours, but we are a little bit younger than yours, a little bit. Um, but, um, but we did not move because of house size. We moved because of school district and because we could clear the debt in the full, one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. And so again, and then we rented for two years so we could save up and buy a house. Of course, in our case, we did it with cash, but the, um, that 
that would be what I would do. And the reason I know that's what I did. So uh, if you don't, then you're staying in that house for two years. Which I think they should anyway, okay. because for the money, Krista, I mean, you guys still have some money to save up for a down payment. And you're going to do that a lot faster with the mortgage payment you have, as opposed to an inflated rate rent payment. I'm, I'm stressed already with three mm-hmm. kids in one bathroom. But um, yeah. I get it. I mean, I hear you. So either one's fine with me. You're all's choice. But you don't. You, the, the third choice is to get some kind of ripoff subprime mortgage and get yourself screwed over. Don't do that. Yeah, that's not it. That's mm-hmm. desperation, and you're not desperate. You're just motivated. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and I'm, what well, I'm trying to say is, is I think your need is a reasonable need. I don't think you're being a drama queen. Okay, good. But but <laughs> no, but, I'm, but, I'm also, but I'm also telling you, you've got these boundaries that aren't going to these guardrails that aren't going to let you get off the interstate where you want. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I just didn't want to get laughed out of the bank. Like if I go up there and you're say I have this offer for land, and I have no, you're, you're um, going to. They're, you know, they're not going to give you the loan. Okay. Or you're not going to get a construction okay. loan and you're not because you're not going to get a permanent takeout. The permanent takeout is the approval for the mortgage, the yeah. permanent mortgage that takes out the construction loan. Mm-hmm. And you can't get approval for that without two years of tax returns of self-employed income. Right. Okay. For, okay. And, and, and can I ask a secondary question? Sure. Um, I have an offer from my employer, it's client, it's rolling over to employer. He's currently building a pretty massive river resort in our area. Um, that's why my employment has gone way up um, from just a couple hundred dollars a month to three or 4,000 a month. And he has offered as a help appearance to the bank to roll me over onto partial salary um, plus commission for each rental. Um, is that an offer that I should take or what should I consider when thinking of taking that as an option? Okay. It, it, Oh, you don't need to do it to get the house because your husband's income just started in October. So we've got a two year burn from there. By then your commission okay. will also be stabilized and you'll know you'll have a, you'll have two years of tax returns. So you're not the problem, uh, on getting approval. Both of you okay. are the problem. Okay. So moving right. to this doesn't solve the problem short term for getting the house. Right. So the only reason you'd move to it is if it's a better deal financially, which way you make the most money. Well, it's hard to know because it's it's vacation rental. So we don't know how busy we would be. So I don't want to look back and say, oh, I, I ripped him off because I got way more salary than I should have. And I don't want to look back and say, wow, I could have made so much more. Employers don't get ripped off like long term. They fire you. Right. <laughs> If the comp yeah. plan doesn't work, we change the comp His plan and we is... let you go. So he's not going to yeah. get ripped off long term. He might get ripped off for one year, but after that, he's going to go, oh, Krista, we're going to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's what we would do, too. I mean, it's reasonable. So, uh, you know, I, I think the trick is just what which way do you make the most money? Because the only stability is in the actual income. It is not in the structure. Okay. The money is what gives you stability, not the method that the money comes to you. So this idea, I have right. a steady job, is laughable. That's true. You know, because okay. there's nothing steady but your ability to go kill something and drag it home. No, that's right. Come so, on, Dave. I mean, that, that you, you know. Yeah, you go you, make it happen. You're the secret sauce. Mm-hmm. So I, I would just sit down and whatever combination. It sounds like the guy's really flexible and a good employer. And he's wanting to, you know, he's got a, he's got a rock star in you, so he wants to motivate you. So figure out the way that helps him the most and helps you the most, and I think you'll have a win-win. This is the Ramsey Show. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. 
Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Jade Walshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Lane is next in Louisiana. Hi, Lane. How can we help? Hey, how are y'all? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Man, um, my my situation, uh, I don't think, is near as bad as a lot of the ones that you guys come across. Um I'm going to start investing in real estate, but the problem that I'm having right now is having the extra money um, that I can set to the side in order to start investing in real estate. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just want some ideas on how I can start, you know, tackling the debt that I have to be able to free up some of my income in order to start investing it. Yeah. I think that, I think that you have the right idea knowing that you got to get out of debt first before you would even think about buying real estate. And it sounds like this is for, wealth building purposes beyond just being a personal re- residence, right? Yes. Okay. Are you, do you live in a house now that you purchased? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Can you start breaking down this debt that you have that's in the way of all this? Yeah. So, uh, total debt is about 160,000, 120 of that is my house. Okay. Um, I've got about 3,700 on a credit card and, uh, 18,000 uh, in personal loans, two personal loans. 18,000 in two personal loans. How much are they a piece? Uh, one of them is about uh, 10,000. The other one's about eight. Cool. Well, I don't know how long you've been listening to us, um, but we do teach to get out of debt before you were do anything close to what you're talking about doing. So I kind of just want to break that down with you piece by piece and then, you know, take, take it or leave it, I would say. Um, okay. The good thing about it is you've got $37,000 worth of debt, 120 of it, it's your house. So what we say Mm -hmm. is pay off everything but the house for for now. So what's your income looking like? Let's see if we can find this margin. Um, Before taxes this year, so I'm I'm an hourly based employee, Uh but we do work a lot of overtime. But so our, our income, it does vary. But as of right now, it's looking like I'll make somewhere between 120 and 130 this year. Okay. And is that just you or do you have a spouse? No, that's just me. That's just you. Are you, do you have a spouse? No. Okay. So 120, man, can you live you have anything on in savings? I'm sorry. What do you have anything in savings or non-retirement investing? Um, no, no, nothing besides a 401k. Um, I do have around a hundred thousand in a 401k right now. Um, and then as far as savings, uh, it's probably about five, 6,000. Five, 6,000. Okay. Well, what we would say, we walk through a series of baby steps. Okay. Are you familiar with any of those or will this be your first time hearing it? This will be my first time here. And I'm, 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 I'm actually just now hearing about Dave Ramsey. I heard about you guys. Great. Maybe a month ago. Great. Well, I'm happy to explain this to you because welcome Lane, to the party. Yes, we're so excited. <laughs> I'm Lane. I'm, I got extra excited right now because I love the baby steps. They work. And so I love telling people about it. Okay. Baby step one is you need to get or keep aside a thousand dollars saved. That's your starter okay. emergency fund. That's just, it's not, te- it's not forever. It's just temporary. Good thing is you've got mm-hmm. 5,000 saved. We keep a thousand of that aside. Then uh-huh. You can take the 4000 put it towards this debt, knock that down to 33000 right? Right. And then baby step two is paying off your debt, like I said before, except your house. So that's, we're knocking out the rest of that 34000 33000 And with your income, you could do that so super fast. It's just you, right? Yeah, right. all you got to do is yeah, control no. trips to the bar. Yeah, that's it. Well, uh, well, luckily, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the bar. Good. Okay. <laughs> well, let me keep walking. We're, we're, we're making so much progress so fast here. It's unbelievable. I know. Let me so keep let's, walking let's through it. So let's temporarily stop your 401k. Temporarily. Okay. Let's get some scissors out and place them across those credit cards and have a plastic surgery party. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we're done with those. We're going to get a debit card. We're not spending any money we don't have anymore. It hadn't turned into a blessing for you. And then we're going to go scorched earth where you have no life. Your whole right. be your whole reason for existence is to pay off debt as fast as possible, as if your hair were on fire. The faster and the deeper you sacrifice, the higher the probability that you actually get out of debt, number one. But number two, obviously, the faster you get to this goal that you called about, which is going to reach over later and pay off the house with a little less intensity. Um, and then we're going to be in a position to save for uh, you know, save up and pay cash for real estate. Yeah. And by the way, right. I wrote my numbers down. I wrote that you had $37,000 in credit card debt. It's 3,700. Yes. So you're working yeah. through this yeah. a lot quicker yeah, than what I was credit saying. Credit card's gone. Yeah. You're credit pay, card's done pay it immediately. Off pay it yeah. off today. And then you've just got mm -hmm. that 18,000 in loans to work through. You're going to do smallest to largest. That's how we pay off our debts. You're going to do the $8,000 one first, and then you're going to move to the $10,000 one. And dude, be, I guarantee, quote me now, by the end of the year, all your debt's going to be gone, and then you're going to save up three to six months of savings, and you're just going to walk this thing through. You'll be able to restart your um, retirement and baby step four back to 15%, and you're just going to walk this thing through. And before you know it, you're going to be set up in a position to where you could save up to buy real estate and cash. Lane, it's exactly what I did, and the book we wrote about it is called The Total Money Makeover, and I own a whole bunch of real estate now. Mm -hmm. All paid for, never took out a mortgage for any of it. And when there's problems, well, cash flow isn't one of them. So um, that's a different situation. So hang on. We're going to send you a copy of that book, The Total Money Makeover. It's going to give you the – it's the baby steps on steroids. It shows you every little nuance, every little detail, because I can tell you're a guy that figures things out. And we're going to show you. You read this thing, you're going to be on fire. You're going to plow. If you do what we teach you to do, you're going to be in such good shape in uh -huh. such a short period of time. The, the good news is you don't have to talk any spouse into this. The bad news is there's nobody nagging on you to make you do it except <laughs> me. So I'll be here to nag you. That's my job. <laughs> and if and if I don't work, I'll send Jade after that. <laughs> I don't know which one is worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one's more frightening. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Lane. We'll take care of you, my friend. Welcome to the party. All right. You got to love it. John's in Ocala, Florida. Hey, John, what's up? How you doing, Dave? Thank you for taking my call. Um, <laughs> new uh, Kind of new listener to the series here. I've been kind of binge watching your uh, episodes there on YouTube uh, for the last you know, couple of days here. I uh, figured I'd call in. Um, I been pretty frugal most of my life uh don't have any debt mm -hmm. uh, me and my fiance both don't have any debt mm -hmm. um i purchased property uh pre-covid and in the intention of building and then covid kind of happened and we put things on hold which looking back on interest rates now i kind of wish i wouldn't have um but we've been with my parents for a few years now and have this property and we need to build and uh and get out so uh planning on building shortly um but I have a decent down payment. Um, well, I've actually got more than the 20% on what I'm assuming we're going to need to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was going to be my question as far as should I put more into my down payment to knock down the loan as far as possible because of the higher interest rate or put down my 20% and then over time just kind of pay on, you know, almost double payments every, every other month or something yeah. like that. John, I'd love um, to answer your question in, in just a second. Let me ask you something. Okay, go ahead. Do you realize that when you started telling me about building that you sighed? <sighs> yeah, I know. That's only because uh, from the beginning, I've been frugal all my life. I've never had any kind of debt. And pre-COVID, we were oh, planning okay. on building. And so it's not, it's not dreading cash. the actual building project. No, no, no. It's I, dreading, I love this I'm going to be in debt. And I want this house. <laughs> yes, okay. Sir. okay. Did you now, let me, let, let's go back to your question then. If you don't want to be in debt, why would you borrow on your house to invest? So I don't have a house. I know, hon. Okay. You called me and said, I don't want to put as much down because I think it might be smart to put it in the stock market. That's just like borrowing on your house to put it in the, to put it in the stock market. Gotcha. You follow me? So yes, put as much down as you possibly can. By the way, all the studies of millionaires that we've done indicate that's the right move. It's what they do. They don't screw around with that. They get out of it as fast as they can, almost universally. Very few actual millionaires. I'm not talking about idiots on TikTok. I'm talking about actual millionaires. Very few actual millionaires love debt. Very few of them. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Sherry is next in Salem, Oregon. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? Well, I guess the question is, um, I don't know if it's been on your head. I'm having trouble hearing yeah, you, honey. Can you right. speak directly into your phone? I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you hear me now? Barely. It's kind of muffled, but let's give it a shot. What you got? Okay. I'm almost 69 years old, and um, I just finished baby step one. Um, I got my my emergency fund, and I'm starting on baby step two. However, I know that because I've been listening to your program for a while, I know that you encourage people to um, buy real estate, buy a property, a house. Mm -hmm. And I have no siblings. I mean, I have siblings, but I have no, no children, uh, no husband. And I live in a travel trailer that I rent property. Mm -hmm. Um, is it really worth it for me to, at 69 years old, to, Buy, pro uh, buy a house after I get my baby steps done? It's not worth it to stress about it. Um, <laughs> but the, um, what are you living on? What's your income? Um, I get uh, approximately 1600 a month. Mm -hmm. um, 950 of that, or nine. 95 of that is Social Security, mm -hmm. and then the rest of it is a, um, a civil service survivor's annuity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from my husband when he passed away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's your entire income? That's my entire income. How's your health? Not real good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's, what are you struggling with? As far as health? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, well, I'm pre-diabetic. I've got fibromyalgia, I've got asthma, I've got, mm -hmm. I've got a whole list of things, mm -hmm. bipolar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, more than anything, I want you to be out of debt and have a big pile of cash for an emergency. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot more concerned about that with you. I would spend 99% of my effort if I were you on that. If something changes in your world, and some extra mm -hmm. money shows up, and you want to think about a house, you could do that. But there's not a house in the numbers you just told me. I didn't think so. And, um, and, and I also didn't hear, I, I think you're pretty content housing-wise, aren't you? 
Actually, I like living in the I little travel trailer. Thought you kind of like that place and everything. The only downside of that as a long play is 10 years from now, that lot price is going to be a lot more. It's going to increase more yeah. than your Social Security and civil service is going to increase. Probably. Yeah. Oh, not probably. 100% chance of that. The government does not. The, when they inflation adjust, it's not the same as the uh, trailer park uh, lot guy inflation adjusting. He's going to adjust more. So yeah. if you you know if you may, if you make it to seventy nine, it's going to be more of a pinch than you have now. But you won't have any debt, and you'll have a pile of money because we're going to build up in a big emergency fund. So I'm okay if that's your play. The big reason we want people to buy a house is just stability. And renting goes up, rent goes up, and it destabilizes. It takes their stability away. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yeah, I I would do the same yeah. thing. I heard what Dave heard in your voice, which is you're content with what you have. It doesn't sound like you're in a condition to just go out and make a bunch more money here anytime soon. So <laughs> for you, the thing to focus on is getting out of this, you know, Keeping what you have, building up a big savings. How much debt do you have? I have about fifteen thousand. On what? And most of that is um, medical bills. Okay. Medical bills. All right. And how old are those medical bills? Um, some of them are over the range, anywhere from about uh, ten years to now. Okay. Anything over one year, they will take 20 cents on the yeah. dollar for if you negotiate with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. The only so, thing is you need to have the cash ready to go. Yeah, if you got a little pile, of, build yeah. you up a little pile of cash and then call that $1,000 bill and tell them, I don't have 1000 I got 200 If you'll take it right now and you got a four-year-old medical bill, they're going to be just happy to hear from you. Mm -hmm. That's true. <clears throat> yeah. When you now do, you need to do that on a day when you're feeling kind of uh, kind of sassy, <laughs> a feisty and, day. And feisty, you don't need to do that on a day when you're feeling down. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So let's. So bottom line is, I think you get out of debt for say four or five grand, mm -hmm. six grand in this situation, maybe. So you're going to mm -hmm. work your way through this with some negotiating power and some other things, um, and. and you know, when you pile up a big old pile of cash, if you decide you want to move that trailer onto a little piece of land and you buy the land, well, that wouldn't be a bad move. Yeah. But but that's something we don't have to fret about. And it's not like you're a mm -hmm. bad person if you don't do that. I'm just trying to get your life stable. And anytime I can get rent out of your life as a long-term play, yeah, it stabilizes your life. That's what I want to do there. Yeah. Well, all she's got to do is... You know, stack up five. Every time she gets five hundred dollars, stack it up. Call them, make a deal. Yep. Keep it in writing forever. Stack up another five dollars. Call, make another deal until she's out of this debt. Good, good clarification point. In writing, if mm -hmm. they don't give it, if a collector doesn't give you a deal in writing, it didn't happen. That's right. Because you can tell they're lying if their mouth is moving. And so you've got to get it in writing and no electronic access to your checking account. Your social security check will hit and they'll clean you out. Yeah. So do not allow them access to your account under any circumstances and under no circumstances do you give them money on a verbal promise on the phone. Well, Harold told me, well, Harold doesn't work here anymore. This is what you'll hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Harold wouldn't have done something like that anyway. You're lying, lady. You still owe the whole bill. Well, I've already paid 200. That's what. You, no, you owe the whole bill. You're going to, it's what you're going to hear if you don't get it in writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, not like I had done this 10,000 times. Okay. So. You just need to be a little sassy with them and make sure you get it in writing and no electronic access to your checking account. Try to settle it for 20 cents on the dollar. I'll bet you can settle most of them for that. Go ahead and explain to them, by the way, you're a widow that lives in social on Social Security in a travel trailer. Right. It's not exactly like you're prime picking for collections. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're what we call judgment proof because you can't garnish your Social Security or civil service. Mm-hmm. So you, they can't take your income. Yeah. The only thing to do is clean your account out if you let they go into your account. So yeah, you got to be careful. Don't give them that. Don't be, give them don't that give information. Don't give them account information ever. So, uh, and, and they don't want a travel trailer, so they're not going to bother you. <laughs> um, but the uh, but but they're going to talk big, and that's why you need to have your swag on, your sassy on. Yeah, turn your swag on. And uh, <laughs> that's your good day, right? That's that's the plan. 
little, 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 little swagger when you walk in the room. Let them feel it. That's how it goes. Because it, it's what it takes. I Absolutely. Mean, you got to bust through it because these poor people sitting in cubicles making phone calls to people not paying bills all day long yeah. are not easy to get along with. Well, sometimes you have to bug them as much as they bugged you. You know, that's a dad gum truth. You know? You have to drive them crazy. <laughs> They call you every day. You call, call them every day. Leave a message. Yeah. Mike, Could I did have you your personal it? home number so I can call you right. on Sunday night? <laughs> Mike, did you make the deal yet? I'm waiting for the paperwork. Call them at dinner time. I love it. <laughs> can I find out where you live so I can call your next door neighbor? Okay. Yeah, let's do that one. That's that's one they do that's illegal as crap. Oh, but gosh. yeah, the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act gives you folks all kinds of protection when you are being harassed by a collector learn it it's good information it is good information i didn't know that back in the day no and and you know the fun ones are they change their names <laughs> i had one i had one lady call me and she she met these made up pseudonyms uh-huh. her name was mrs baskerville Nuh-uh. the hounds of baskerville yeah another one was mrs savage that wow okay. and I, I started laughing i said you're no more savage than anything and she goes that ain't funny. That's my real name. I said, no, it's not your name. You completely made that crap up. <laughs> That's when you make your name up. I'm like, well, Mrs. this is not Dave. Yeah. This is... <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Savage, this is Mr. Cyclops. There you I go. Mean, come on, right here. <laughs> One eye in the center of my head. Oh, brother. These people. Some people's kids. Can't this make it up. is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, who work that they love and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. We're glad you're with us. This is your show. We talk about you right in front of you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Kevin is starting off this hour in Nashville. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? I've got a question about uh, the dollar seeing the record inflation and uh, the BRICS nations. And um, I've come across some information recently that there's a highly anticipated summit that they're doing on October 20 or August 22nd. And uh, people are expecting them to announce their own gold backed currency. They say these five nations represent 40% of uh, global GDP and Saudi Arabia has thrown their hat in the ring with them. So the rumors are if Saudi joins them and drops the dollar, then we lose the petrodollar and every country that holds treasury bonds to buy oil from the Saudis gets their dollars and all those dollars come home and cause catastrophic inflation. Um, how much of this is substantial? What do you think about BRICS? Is, is there any real threat here or, or anything to do to prepare or uh, is it just another passing 
bit of fear mongering. Well, I I think the um, there's a lot of discussion about it, particularly uh, if you read too much on the internet. But the uh, um, my you know you're asking my opinion, and that's worth really everything you're paying for it. Um, the uh, uh, my opinion is that Russia and China. Uh, probably can't get the Saudis to the table because the Saudis are probably way too smart to think they're going to undermine the U.S. economy. Oh, by the way, undermining the U.S. economy would not be profitable for all of those other companies countries because they're supported by the U.S. economy. Um, and so if 40% of the GDP kills 60% of the GDP, kind of kills the whole thing. It's that is stupid. So, uh, no, they're not going to kill themselves by killing us. That's economically. Uh, it's, 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 it's counterproductive. And the idea that you can get all of those communists to line up and not try to shoot each other is going to be humorous on the long play. It, they might be able to do it in one day in August, but are they actually going to pull this off? Listen, they couldn't pull the euro, euro off in Europe to the level that it had any effect on anything. And those people all get along versus the group you're talking about. So I think it's, a you know, I, I, they, they're working on it, but I don't think that the chances that it's going to change your life or change my life is there personally. If it did do everything you're talking about, I don't prepare for meteorites. I don't have a meteorite plan. If a meteorite strikes the earth and kills everything, I don't have a plan for that. And I don't have a plan for apocalypse like you're talking about. So uh, there's not one, by the way, uh, because what you have then is you have a total economic and governmental collapse. And the only plan then that works is bottled water and bullets. Uh, gold is a joke because no one trades gold bars in the middle of a collapsed economy. And certainly no one trades paper money in a collapsed economy. But the U.S. government, our way of life as we know it, private property rights as we know it, all the real estate I own would be taken by the next guy with a gun. And so, uh, you know, bullets and water is how you'd survive, I guess. But I just don't believe I'm not I, I am not stockpiling either. Uh, except that bullets go up too fast in price, and I shoot a lot. But I, uh, but that's not that's irrelevant. But the, 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 so all that to say, I'm not sitting and wringing my hands over it. I do have some uh, friends that spend too much time reading that crap that are wringing their hands over it. Uh, but I I had a big argument with one of them the other night. I'm like, dude, you really need to get off the internet. Yeah. Um, and so uh, because you can't a you can't do anything about it if it actually all unfolded the way you did. But b the theory is broken, and the broken parts of the theory is that you can get all these people to agree, and number and stay agreed because they're evil at their core. Evil people cannot continually agree because they serve themselves and don't serve others. And so it can't you can't find unity in that long term. Number 2, if they represent 40% of the economy and they 40% of the world's economy, which I'm not sure that number is accurate. I think that's pretty high. But if it was that and if 40, and if they destroyed 60% of the economy by doing this, then they've destroyed themselves in the process mm. because they everything they do hinges on the U freaking S. Hello. I mean, it yeah. really does. And that's that's just that's economic mathematics. So uh, no, I'm not worried about it. I'm a I'm a control the controllables type gal. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you that's like one of those serenity prayer moments where it's like, I just need the serenity to yeah. realize I can't control this. I'm, I'm not I, I have no idea yeah. if there's aliens. Yeah. Yeah. And UFOs. <laughs> and, and if they take over, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm going to call Will Smith because I don't. <laughs> You know, I don't, I can't pull, I can't, I, I don't have black. a plan for that one. You yeah. know? Yeah, I and don't control what Saudi there's Arabia There's probably does. aliens. I, I, I'm guessing there Come is. On, I don't know. Yeah, or, it looks, or, or somebody throws a lot of Frisbees in front of cameras. Oh, I'm not aliens. sure which. But, you know, I, I have no idea. I, and you know what? I'm, <laughs> the time I'm going to spend worrying about it is really close to zero, Kevin. <laughs> I feel that. Really close to zero. So oh, I, man, I oh, appreciate man. your question, and it was earnest and honest of question. I honestly do not spend any of my time planning my personal finances or my life around the end of the world. That's right. End of the world scenarios. Um, and I have also made one other promise. A lot of guys in the financial world, when they get old like me, they write the end of the world financial book. 
There's something about people in my world. <laughs> You're they not going to predict the end, they Dave? Get pre- they get paranoid and they predict the end of the economy. They predict the end of the world. And there's a lot of old financial people that did that. And I'm not going to do that one either. I, I told my kids, <laughs> take to unplug the computer if I start writing about the end of the financial world. So I'm, I'm, I'm the glass half full, control the controllables. Yeah. I think we're going to be okay. And I'm not That's making good. fun of you, Kevin. It's an honest question. And the numbers you gave me were very precise and accurate. Mm-hmm. And other than I think those guys are overstating it, well, of course they over. They're e- they're Russians. They overstate their egos. <laughs> they overstate everything. Mm. I mean, the only bigger drama queen than a Russian is an American. So I mean, they're drama queens. So of course they're acting like they're got something they hadn't got. Yeah. You know, they're starving to freaking death. The whole th- the whole communism thing. Oh, here's an, here's another one for you. Read an a credible economist the other day said, in 20 years you're going to got to worry anything about China. You know why? They got no workers. Their that's, birth that's rate, a good their birth point. rate hasn't been negative for two decades. Yeah. Because they're controlling the the birth rate. And so the number of people that are going to be eligible in the workforce is gone. That's a very good point. So their Dave. ability to be a uh, major economic player in 25 years, very low. They killed themselves with their birth rate issue. Wow. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Washaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Thanks for being with us. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Home improvement isn't always about repairs or remodels. Sometimes it's about comfort. Neighborly's Mosquito Joe service can handle your outdoor pest control and make it fun and comfortable to go outside all season long. Visit Neighborly.com to find a service near you. Today's question comes from Roger in Oklahoma. He says, I have two bachelor degrees, the second in nursing with 180000 in student loans. I travel nursed during COVID and was able to save up a lot of cash and haven't touched it knowing that debt, the debt pause would be ending soon. I just took a clinical specialist role with a great company and I'm on track to get into sales in the next two years. I'll be making $125,000 salary and I currently have $100,000 in cash spread around secure investing accounts, making a guaranteed 4.6% growth year over year. I'm asking for any guidance on how to approach these student loans. I am engaged and do not want to bury my finance with student loans. All right, good question. Um, I'm glad that he started saving up money. Uh, knowing that he was going to have to pay off these loans. I kind of wish he had just went ahead and made the payments instead of, you know, keeping it there. Um, but it looks like he's got 100000 saved. It sounds like it's just in an HYSA based on the rate, even though he said they're investing accounts. Would you agree with that, Dave? Uh, could be. Could be bonds. I don't know. Hmm. If it's... Doesn't matter. Whatever it is, I would liquidate that. And Today. I would... Today. Pay off these student loans. Today. I mean, you're going to have twenty five k. Let's see. You're going to have 80K, 80K left. left. And you can just and you cash are going to burden your fi- fiance with student loans if you're uh-huh. getting married anytime soon because you're making a hundred and twenty five about twenty five and you still got eighty k in debt. Uh huh. But depending on when y'all are getting married, you might have if you 
take this job and you hustle your butt off, you might could have this paid off before you get married if the if the wedding is a year away. I don't know. But the, the truth of the matter is go ahead and pay them off. And for anybody, by the way, if you've got cash, a lump sum of cash, I don't care how much cash it is. If you've got cash sitting there and you're saying to yourself, hey, I don't want to pay this off, but you've got debt. It's not real. It's not real. Like basic math tells you if you've got 80,000 in debt and you've got 80,000 saved, you got zero. That 80,000 saved is it's just an yeah. illusion. So throw the hundred at the debt today. 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 Quit <laughs> screwing around and trying to figure out a way to scheme out of this. You got to pay it off. Got to pay you got to roll up your sleeves and go headlong into it like a crazy man. That's right. Here's the other thing, dude. 125,000 clinical specialist. Uh, Is that a little low? You're still a nurse. Uh, so you're now working ER on the weekends. There you go. We're going to add another 40K to your income because you don't want to be a burden to your fiance. And you're going to live on beans and rice, rice and beans, nothing, mm -hmm. no eating out, no travel, no nothing. Yeah. So you get this mess cleaned up. You made a mess, mess, mess. Before you start anything, you got to clean up the mess, mess, mess. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We'll work like a maniac and we're going to live on nothing. And you're going to pay this on, pay this loan off, pay this hundred thousand. That's right. Today. Nothing. Nothing. Remember that commercial? Nut. He's going to go into that wedding with nothing, honey. That's it. Oh. That's you remember that? Some cereal. Yeah. They, they, they can serve that at the reception. <laughs> some that's nothing, right. honey. <laughs> that's what I'm bringing. That's the debt I'm bringing into this marriage. Nothing, honey. I know. That's, that's it. right. There you go. That's, we just made up a we thing. We did. Look at that. We did. All right. So, yeah. You can pay this off, but you're going to work like a maniac, yep. and you're going to live like people think you joined a cult. Yeah. And you're going to go cray cray here. Get this knocked out, man. And let's address that wedding. You don't okay. need to spend a bunch on the wedding. You need to knock out these loans. And let me tell you about the spirit of I'm going to invest and make a spread of 4.6%. <laughs> let me tell you what that got you. Nothing. Nothing, honey. In one year, if you had a if you had zero on your student loans, which is what you had, and you made 4.6% on 100,000, you know what you made? Four thousand six hundred dollars. Well, do you aren't do? you impressive? You still got a eighty thousand dollar freaking problem while you're screwing around with these little flippy doos that don't do anything. A whole four thousand dollars on a hundred grand. Yeah. Whoopee. Yeah. You didn't do nothing. Get it paid off now and lean in. That's what you do. This is. Let me tell you guys. The, when you start being, a, I'm, I'm a math nerd extraordinaire, and I tried for years to try to get the math to outsmart the debt. Yeah. And the only way you knock out the debt is you punch it in the nose repeatedly. That's it. It's that's it. W and if that doesn't work, hit it with a club. Mm -hmm. and if that doesn't work, stab it with a knife. Mm -hmm. Kill it. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it. Dead, This dead. is This is someone robbing your home. We are merciless. Yeah. Okay? No. No. Quit screwing around with some kind of little $4,000 math riddle. Yeah. And act like you did something. Pay off your debt now. Everyone, listen to this. This is how you get out of debt. You get this thing in your voice where you go, that's it. I've had it. And that's when you, it doesn't move until you it do that. It doesn't move. Doesn't move. It doesn't move. Come on, Dave. Got to get pissed. You do. It doesn't work until you do, man. You do. I'm trying to figure this out with my little math nerd brain, yeah. and all I did was make a mess. All right, <laughs> Roman is in Orlando. Hi, Roman. How are you? Hey, Mr. Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Uh, yes. Hi, Ms. Jake. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? I have a quick question. Uh, oh, not much. I, my question is, um, should I stop or reduce my contributions to my 457 in order to pay off my mortgage sooner rather than later and by sooner i mean probably by february of next year which your is mortgage. our third child is due your yeah. mortgage correct how come it says car on my screen uh, cause it was either the mortgage or the car but my wife uh, told me no the mortgage not the car and i was like oh okay well, your wife's wrong <laughs> Oh, it's probably a novel wrong. idea okay. for her, but she's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that was part of the question was that I, for, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. If you're in baby yeah, step two, if you're in baby step two, you would pause in investing contributions. 
But and if you, you would attack mm-hmm. your car loan. Yes, because that would be part of baby step two. So that's how that works. You if pay for, off the car before. What do you owe on your car? Yeah. Uh, twenty-four. And what's your household income? Uh, single income, one about one twenty. Okay. Let's get it. Good. And um, what do you owe on your house? Uh, forty-eight. Okay. All right. Thousand. Yeah. We're gonna pay off the car. I mean, do you have any money in savings? Uh, we do actually. We have a we have thirty five thousand in savings, and twenty of that is a uh, pay no off your car. Pay emergency. off your car today, now. Write a check tonight. Pay off Got the it. car. Stop your four, and then you Got don't it. have to stop your four fifty seven. By the way, you build your emergency fund. So, baby, you, you're fairly new to us, Roman. We're picking on you. I'm sorry. Because you, you don't, no, you don't, you don't know all the, you don't know all this stuff. You just walked into the bear's den. That's, okay? you did, you did. Yeah, I'm sorry. So let, let's start, let's no, start, let's start, let's start again, and we'll start nice. Okay, here's nice. Now, what all we right. teach is a thing called the baby steps, and the first step is a thousand dollars saved. You've done that. Step two is to become debt free, other than your home. This is the fastest way to wealth, as proven by the mm-hmm. largest study of millionaires ever done. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is not a game, and it's not an accident. It's not something we made up because we're on YouTube or some crap, okay? This is stuff we've been doing for 30 years, and we've led more people out of debt and into wealth than anybody else. This is the process we use. Baby step two is pay off everything but your house. That would be your car in your case, and you have the money, oddly enough, in your account to write a check today and do that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we do, actually. So now you're (laughs) debt-free. Now, then baby step three, other than your house, baby step three is have an, an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. If you don't quite have that left over after you pay off the car, let's round that up real quick. Maybe step four is 15% of your income going into retirement. I would prefer a 401k or Roth IRAs over a 457. A 457 is just deferred comp. So I'd prefer to do that. Unless you're getting a match there, I, that wouldn't be my first stop. Um, and then, with any money I can find in the budget, I'm going to knock out this little bitty mortgage you got, and I'll be on your wife's team at that point. Mm-hmm. But it takes me a while to get to your wife's team. Hey, thanks for calling in, man. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business, too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jade, I got to do a better job remembering some of these people calling her brand new. Yeah. Because, like, a whole bunch of new listeners out there, like, bazillions of them. Bazillions. Thank you guys for spreading the word out there. We appreciate it. 
If you subscribe to this show, if you click the subscribe button, click the follow button on your podcast or YouTube or however it is you're doing it, it helps us a bunch because it pushes us to the front. Uh, We're now in the top 12 Apple podcasts, as an example, in the entire world. There's 4 million and some change podcasts right now. We're number 12 this week. So thank you. And we know that that's you guys doing that. You're sharing it. You click the share button. You're telling people about it. You're telling people to listen to your local talk radio station. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you're picking us up, tell people where we are. Drop a five-star review if that's available to you as well. That's very helpful. And so we're getting all these brand new listeners, and and I got to be nicer to them. <laughs> well, we've got we to remind ki- them. We don't want to kill the new listeners. It's counterproductive. That's true. We have to teach them more than we can yell at them. Yeah. Well, I just don't want to kill them. I mean, I, we can yell at them, but we can't. Yeah, yell at them. I like yelling. I'm not going to lie. It's it's fun. It's. <laughs> You like yelling too, Dave, admit it. I, I just tried to be nice and look at what you're doing. All right. <laughs> Samantha is in Salt Lake City. Hey, Samantha, what's up? Hey, Dave. Hey, Jade. How are you two? Doing Better good. than we deserve. What's up? Yes. I'm so glad I get to talk to both of you. Um, so a uh, little background. I am 37 years old and I'm just... Uh, getting the baby step one i'm working on it but i've also been a long time listener since like 2019 so i'm not new to the game okay i actually got to talk to you dave a couple of years ago um was i nice and you were very nice good you were very nice but very direct and that's well, what i appreciate good. that's what we want to be okay. <laughs> we want to tell <laughs> so you the my truth question today yes yes and i appreciate that i i love your show i listen to it all the time. Um, The reason I'm calling today is it's hard to be motivated, even though I know that I need to do this and I know that it's going to change my life for the better. Um, I'm working so much and I'm, um, and it's getting to the point where I'm like working so much and I'm not spending a lot. And I mean, I get why I need to do that, but I guess my question is more for Jay today uh, because I know Jay's story and Jay, I just wanted to ask you directly, when you were in that debt and you were trying to get out of it, what was the main motivation for you when you were like, oh, this this is like draining. It's so hard to just work and not spend. Mm-hmm. What kept you motivated and kept, kept going? How, how long have you been doing this? Um, Hardcore, where you're working all the time and not spending. About six months. Okay. That helps. Okay. Thank you. Um. To answer your question, I had I had a couple of things. I had a very crystal clear picture in my mind of what my life was going to look like on the other side. Very, very clear. It was me walking down a street, uh, walking my son to school. I knew the way I felt. I was I had no debt. I was living in a home uh, that we were affording. I was um, in a situation of autonomy. I had a very, very clear picture. And it was peace peace. and it was totally not (laughs) my current situation because at the time there was no way I would be buying a house because I had so much debt. You know the story. So Uh having that picture there um, is so important and no one can find that for you. You've got to dig deep and figure out like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this? Because it, it, you know, there's got to be something beyond the math generally. Now, for some people, math is enough. You got to have a why. You got to have something in there that is driving it's it, it's it's um it's not optional it must happen yeah, i definitely have a why okay just, what's your why it's hard to stay focused on that sometimes my why is to be able to just have peace like you guys talk about all the time financial peace being able to go into a restaurant and not look at the price and just yeah. order what you want mm-hmm. or you know like going to um a grocery store and i'm in line and then the person behind me you know is a is a mom that has two kids and i'm like you know what she's got turned yeah. off with the groceries i'll just i'll just take care of that you know just to be outrageously outrageously generous and mm-hmm. be and be uh, how, and how old have, are you uh, samantha, samantha how old are you 37 years old okay are you married no i okay. have um i have a fiance that Good. we've been together for about three years so okay. and and that's mainly that's he's my biggest why um okay and I, I want us to both be a power couple and be able to, um, you know, conquer the mm-hmm. world together. Mm-hmm. And we can only do that with um, being financially stable. And he's awesome. He's got, he's 
got like thirty thousand dollars and then make no debt. He uh, mm-hmm. has over hundred thousand dollars in his four hundred one k. How, how much years do old. you have in debt? I have about thirty thousand dollars in debt, and, and it's what do you make? Like what do you bills. make? About, um, actually, I have it pulled up. It, I think I make um, thir- I make twenty hundred dollars a month, and so you make what? Say again. Thirty three thousand six hundred. What do you do? I am. Um, I do a lot. So I do. What's uh, your main gig? Support, a technical support for a diabetes company. I work from home. And that pays twenty five k. It pays eighteen bucks an hour. Okay. And I work full time. Okay. All right. And um. And uh. Is that what you want to be doing? Is that what you? I mean. I mean, yes, I I definitely find um, I definitely find purpose in my job Mm because I get to talk to people and get to help them all the time. And I'm also diabetic, so I can relate to the customers. Mm -hmm. Is there Um, something that here? I want to challenge you with a couple of things. One, mm -hmm. is there something that you could do in that same field where you're helping people, you're helping diabetics, you're relating to people where they are, where you can earn more money? Because I think that you can I think your skill set's more valuable than twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I do too. Like I, I've been in customer service for a long time. Um, but yeah, like I I've been definitely trying, I'm definitely looking, but I'm also doing pet sitting and doing task rabbits, which yeah, is when are you getting married? Income. I would say probably next year. You would say. So you don't have a date set? No, not yet. Why? Um I our main focus right now is to I mean, he's working on some stuff with his mental health. Like, it's not that he's unmentally unstable, but, and I'm mainly just working on getting out of debt and getting financially stable. Is the mental he, health thing a caveat to whether you marry him or not? No, no, no. He's, he's, it's more about him getting, being ready to marry me. Interesting. That sounds interesting. Because I'm not going to lie. Need, you, you've you been engaged for be, three years. I need to be more financially stable. Yeah, you've been in, you've been engaged for three years. No, we've been together for three years. We've only been engaged probably about three months. Can I ask you something? Did he, um, did he, does he want you to be debt free before you get married? No, he just wants to be able for me to be able to prove that I can follow a budget and be financially disciplined. And I don't think that's too much to ask. You got to get your income up. That's, that's key. Um, You've been together three years. You said you've been listening since 2019. This debt that Mm -hmm. you have, is it old debt or have you been creating new debt since you met him? Because I'm basically trying to understand his question. I'm basically trying to understand his point of saying, I want to prove that you're not a princess, basically. But my question is, well, if you haven't been creating any more debt, if you made and if you've 133, been, you might be a princess. But at 33,000, yeah. you're not a princess. And she's not. T- it's not like she's been taking on more debt, Dave. This is old debt. She's proven herself. I don't like the way. I don't like. I don't like what this, this guy is saying yeah. to you. <laughs> there's something. Something. There's something wrong in paradise. Yeah. <laughs> trouble. Um, it's trouble, Dave. Something. Something. I don't know what it is. But yeah. Okay. We got to get your income up, on. Uh, Because you're not making any money at 37 years old. You're close to the poverty level. So let's do some things on your career if I were you. Hang on. We're going to send you Ken Coleman's book, From Paycheck to Purpose, and help you move that direction. This is The Ramsey Show. Shaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Christina is with us in Huntsville. Hi, Christina. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thank you both for all that you do for everybody. Well, thank you. How can we help? 
Yeah, um, my question is, I have a 2014 uh, Buick LaCrosse. I owe 5000 on it, and uh, the transmission has gone out. We've called around and got the lowest quote. We got it started at 6500 Now it's at 5000 It's the cheapest one that we can get. Um, my husband and I are looking to move in February back home to Washington State from where we are now, and my parents have a car that they can just give me. And my thought, after talking to some other people that do Dave Ramsey, is to um, let this car go um, and just get what we can get for it and the condition that it's in and go with just one car. We're both self-employed. We don't have to have two cars. It's not like I have an eight to five I have to get to. And um, to take that extra money that instead of having to pay 5000 to get it fixed and I'm trying to pay off my debt, uh, we're, we're both working on paying off our debt, um, we wouldn't have to pay the 5000 for the repair. We wouldn't have to pay 5000 for the car. Mm. Um, I'd save $500 a month by not paying insurance in my monthly payment. Um, so I am of the mindset of letting the car go and taking my parents' car in February. When, when you say let it go, move. let it be repoed? No, sir. I'm sorry. I, when I say let it go, I just probably because I'm emotionally attached to my car. Oh, I, I just see. mean uh, just sell like it not repair it. Can get for it. What can you Correct. get for I it? Did, what can you get for it with no transmission? Blue, yep. I looked at that. I did put that into Kelly Blue Book, and it would be either right at what we owe, no, well, possibly a little bit more, somewhere in that. Not with no transmission. You're getting I put the. I know. I marked I, that it doesn't have a transmission. It's not drivable, but that was what it said. But let's let's just assume I'm wrong. Um, well, who who, who wrong. do you owe the five thousand dollars to? My credit union. Okay, all right. You're not going to get five k for the car, I don't think. I could be wrong. I hope you do. It I wish a, you would. It has a lot of. It's a very. It's a very. It's the. the fancy if it's worth five, of, I thought it was worth five thousand dollars. Beef. What was it worth with the transmission in it? Oh, if I had the transmission, eight to ten. Okay. Oh. No, it doesn't depend. What's it worth with the transmission in it? The, the price range that they gave, gave with a functional car was 8 to 10, and with it, without okay. the transmission, okay. it was 5. Right. That makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, you might get 5 for it then. Okay. So you okay. wouldn't take the okay. 5 and buy another car? You would no, just... she got to pay off the loan. No. she got to oh, pay off I want it... That's my. Uh, yeah. That's our plan. I if you can get five k for it, in a hundred percent of the time, I'm doing what you want to do. That's uh, yes, I'm in. Okay. If you don't get five k for it, I'm still selling it, and okay. asking the credit union for the to loan you the to let you sign a note for the difference. Okay. Because you don't have any okay. money saved, right? We do. I could. I could pay off the difference. I wouldn't have to get a loan. We have a little. A little nest egg over there. It's. I mean, small. Like. Three three thousand. We're both self employed, so we have our tax money that we set aside. We scrape okay. off the top right. of every check. Yeah, dump okay. the car. Sell the car. Okay. I'm okay. with you. I, I think you. I like your plan. Here's the thing. Here's the formula for everybody out there and for you. Okay. If the mm-hmm. car mm-hmm. is worth eight thousand dollars fixed, it's worth five thousand or four thousand dollars, and the repair is let's 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 call the work car worth four. If the repair is mm-hmm. five five and four you now have nine thousand dollars in a car that's only worth eight you don't fix that car right so if you're driving a hoopty that's three thousand dollars and somebody comes in with a thousand dollar repair you don't do that you dump the car for salvage and go get you Mm -hmm. another throwaway car um Mm -hmm. and yours is borderline hoopty it's not quite all the way down (laughs) to hoopty i mean it's eight thousand dollar car fixed Mm -hmm. or nine thousand dollar car fixed okay so yours is questionable and the other possibility and i wouldn't do it here i like your plan better is to buy a used transmission that fits it from a salvage yard oh we we did look at that too and it was still it was the the labor that kills you to to get those kinds of things done Mm, that you can shop okay okay but i i think you could probably do it for half of what you're talking about but i'm still dumping this car i love your idea and you can you're going to sweat it out till you make the move with one car and that gets rid of the debt right yes yes yeah i like i like your willingness to sacrifice i like the plan it's a lot of freedom in it i do too it kind of breathes good doesn't it you you like you breathe good when you're talking about it right even though you cry Mm -hmm. just a little bit because you like that car yeah (laughs) 
too. Yeah, my husband uh, likes to have definitely uh, two cars, but I am totally down. Like, I am totally of the mindset that I'm just willing to do whatever it takes Come to on. get us to where we want to be. Yeah. I like you, Christina. I yeah. could tell from the moment you started talking, you weren't making excuses. You were willing to do what it takes. I love that. You, well, can, you can hear it. You know, January, February will be here pretty fast. That's right. It will, yes. Yeah, yes. Just blink and it'll be here. I mean, it was just 20 minutes ago it was here. I know, right? <laughs> I don't even know what month we're in now. I'm just rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Goes really fast. Jake's in Texas. Hey, Jake, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Well, um, I'm venturing into the exciting and stressful world of home buying, and uh, I am... Uh, trying to consolidate and get all my debts paid off and just trying to do this the right way because uh debt sucks Mm -hmm. what's your question um well currently i've uh i have let's see i have three major debts i guess you would say Uh, my truck my wife's car and i have one credit card that is very close to being paid off um what are the amounts of each um I owe 17000 on my truck. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife's car, it's almost done. I owe two k, 2000 on her car mm-hmm. and $2,400 on the credit card. Okay. Um, and currently, I've bumped up. I'm trying to attack that car because it's my lowest one. Um, and I got it bumped up to where I'm paying $600 every two weeks right now. I'm trying to really attack and get that one out of my way. What, and then I was going to go up to the question, credit card Jack? next. What's that? What's your question, Jake? Um, should I should I get all of this debt, even my truck, gone before I commit to a house? Yes. What made you? Here's what I want to ask you. What made you ask that question? Because I think you know the answer to it. Um, I mean, I've been up to debt in my eyeballs before, and I'm finally out of that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I just uh, I don't want to go back into that. But I'm with a I'm with a job now that um, I'm doing very well. What's your, what's your household income? Um, well, I actually, I'm, it's just me that works. My wife's a stay-at-home mom. She homeschools and stuff, so I'm the main source of income. But um, about, it varies because I'm hourly, but it's... Uh, On a normal average. month, what do you see? Um, about it's 9K a about month. About 9,000. Sometimes 10. Okay. I think that... What your first instinct was correct when you said I've been in debt up to my eyeballs. You don't want to experience that because if you go and get a mortgage right now, it is not the fact that you said you feel stressed about this. It's because you have this debt. When it's time to buy a house, you're going to be debt free. You're going to have a nice down payment saved up. You're going to have three to six months, including your truck, including your truck. Okay, (laughs) you guys need to get on beans and rice, rice and beans and get this stuff paid off and then save up your down payment. If you want to do it faster, sell your truck, but I don't think you want to do that. So, and you don't have to. He doesn't have to. Because yeah. you could be debt free in about six months mm-hmm. if you lean into this pretty easy. And you can pay more than you're paying, by the way. Your little $600 thing's wimpy on $9,000 income. Yeah. So you need to lean in harder than that. Like, I want a house lean in. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sick of this lean in. Like, I'm pissed and I'm getting out of debt lean in. Not like I'm mildly aggravated no you need to get really angry at it and you need to get on a budget i have a feeling they're kind of just living in yeah, whatever's they're just, they're left just, they're just talking they're about throwing it, it on they're the just talking about it and acting like we're doing something yeah so you, you're, you're at the beginning stages my friend you're gonna do well but turn up the heat and get this done so by next spring you're buying a house with no debt and your emergency fund in place plus a down payment and that's what you do in the spring and you bust it between now and then that's what i would do This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Live 
from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Marie's with us in Chattanooga. Hi, Marie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. It's really good to talk to you guys. How are you doing? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? So, short question, how do I ensure that my parents don't end up homeless in their retirement without them coming to live with my husband and I? So I'm Why is that your job? My husband is... Because... Um, <laughs> I, my parents don't have anything safe for retirement, um, and for various reasons, um, my, that I experienced growing up, my husband and I are not okay with them living with us in the future. Um, Why is it your job to take care of them? Because I can see the trajectory that they're on. Why is it your job to take care of them? If they go in the street, why is it your job to get them out of the street? Because they're my parents, and I love them, and I don't want to see them homeless. Okay. It's not your... Here, here's where... That's a desire. That's it's what not I was going to say. Job. It's not your job. It's something that you... Like to do. ...want to do and are choosing to do. So... But don't don't pose yeah. the question in your mind as if you are somehow forced ethically right. or morally or spiritually into doing this. Now... Why, are, why would your parents not have any money? Why would they not at least have Social Security? They would have Social Security, but... Um, They're too irresponsible to pay their house payment? They don't have a house right now. Um, where, so, where do they live now? Yeah. They are in the process of moving to another state. My father just got a new job. And um, with various moves in the past couple of years, all of the equity that they had built up in the house that they um, owned when I was growing up um, has been depleted. The reason that I feel like I want to give back and I don't want to put my parents in this situation is because um, you didn't put, not you the didn't put them in this situation. You didn't Hold put on. them in this yeah. situation. They put themselves in this I, situation. I'm not saying that it's my fault. I know it's their fault. You didn't put them in. You, you open, just said I put them in this situation. You didn't put they, them in this situation. Here's the thing, Marie. The reason we're getting you on your language is because the way what you speak is a reflection of what the way your heart feels. So even though you're saying I know, I know, I know. Why, you don't. What, you don't because you keep saying it. It'll be if they end up like this. It'll be my fault. I have to be the one to help them. If I don't do it, no. Like you keep putting that on yourself, and it's so important to make sure okay. your language is clear and the facts about this are clear going in. How old are your mom and dad? They are sixty-three. Okay, and your dad just got a new job. And they're moving to another state. What's your dad mm-hmm. going to be making? Two hundred and eighty. You don't. Two hundred. And eighty thousand yes. dollars a year. He, yes, the reason is my parents have. Um, my grandfather decided that he was going to pay for my um, father and my uncle to go through school, and so my parents decided that they were going to do that for us. So I don't have any debt because of that, and I am super, super grateful for that. And I want. To no, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Some, somewhere without... I got confused. Stop, stop, stop. You just went off the. Mm-hmm. You just went off to another planet. Um, I asked you if you're what your father was going to be making in his new job. Yes. And you said two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Yes. And what I need to know is, has he always earned an income like that, or is this just out of the blue? It has been around the two hundred thousand mark. Okay, this this, um, this answers the question. This answers the question. Okay, My stop. Have been stop. Paying. You don't need to do anything. You need to look at your mom and dad and say, "I love you." Bye. You you don't you, people that make three hundred thousand dollars a year and can't figure out a way to have housing aren't your problem. This is asinine. Marie, that you even have the feeling that you have to prepare for the homelessness of someone making $280,000. Your family is dysfunctional. 
and they by have the dumped way, some crap on you. And what do you make, by the way, Marie? Um, I bring in four thousand a month, and my husband brings <gasps> in um, thirty six hundred. Look, look, no, 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 no. Nope. What in the world, nope. girl? Nope. Your dad makes two eighty, and the two of you together don't make ninety, and you somehow got that this is your job to prepare for their because homelessness. Because he's not going to be making two. They're not going to be making two eighty indefinitely. Oh, well, no kidding. It, once that my father is unable to work, they won't have anything built up, and since well, that's we their are fault. not okay with them living with us. That's their fault. I'm aware of that. Let me tell you, the number of dollars I'm going to give this guy is zero. Marie, they don't have to live with you. Look, They don't have to live with you. you. If he screws up a $280,000 income and ends up homeless, that is not on you. It is not on you. You do not need to do this. I don't know what in the world has gotten into you. And by the way, they're not going to end up homeless. The worst case scenario, they're going to be renting some condo. These people land on their feet repeatedly. Yeah. They lose everything and get a job at 63 <laughs> making 300 grand. This guy lands on his feet like an alley cat. <laughs> and he's got his daughter over here making oh, 40K gosh. worried about his homelessness. Yeah. This is, hey, kiddo, really, you need to sit down and see it. You need to see a counselor. Yeah. Because this is, this is deep stuff. You are, you are reflecting back weird crap that happened in your house growing up. And I don't know what it was, but how in the world your mama ends up a travel agent for guilt trips on you is beyond me. I mean, there is no possible way you end up taking care of these people. Absolutely not in my not. book. Nope, 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 nope. Dave, dad does cocaine, so I have to take care of him. No, you don't. Well, you have to honor your father and your mother, the Bible says. Yes, we honor the position of fatherhood and motherhood. We do not honor the use of cocaine. There's two different things. If you misbehave with 280 grand to the point you don't take care of your own household, that is not on your kids. Yeah. It's not. And and you know what? I, I got to say this because I, I hear it and I heard it in her and it has to be addressed. There is a burden that kids, grown kids, grown adult children face when they see, okay, your parents, they're not doing what they should do. And even if you know it's not my job. Like, it's not my responsibility. There is a part of guilt that you feel that's like, okay, that's like, okay, am I going to be the one that's going to watch them, you know, go by the wayside? Am I going to let them live like this? And you, at some point, you do have to make peace with that. If you're a kind person, people that you love are hurting. it's It's not fun to watch people you love doing stupid things. If you're a kind person, if you're a good person. But it doesn't, I, I, it doesn't make me happy that people that I love are doing no. stupid things. But it also doesn't make me responsible Yeah, you have them. to make peace with the fact that you're not responsible for adult choices. Yeah, Henry Cloud has this wonderful book called Boundaries. You need to memorize it. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you are here. Ha! Speaking of Jade, she is going to be doing this Wednesday, August the 9th, a free, free, did I mention it's free, budgeting webcast. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. We're going to talk about all those pain points that people deal with day after day trying to do their budget, the things keeping people from doing a budget right? We're going to talk about that. We're going to address it. We're going to show you live on the screen how this stuff works using our program, Every Dollar. You're going to walk away from it feeling like, huh, I know what I'm doing now. I feel like I got a raise. And how to deal with an irregular income. Yeah, An unpredictable yep. income. How do you budget for that? We're going to show you how to do that with Every Dollar. Mm-hmm. We've got a thing called paycheck planning that is one of the uh, 
items in the robust app that we have. That was that was a tech, that's a good word. That's a that's a good uh, to internet term. Yes, there. it is. It's robust. Robust. It's robust. It is. It really is. These features will make budgeting. It just makes it a no brainer. It makes it so easy. Of course, a program does all the math for you. It helps you decide when is the best day to actually spend the money that you're saying you're going to spend through your budget. So that you know, no worries. We're going to help you with that. It's free. I will be the person uh, guiding you through that. And let me tell you, these classes, they fill up fast. Every time we do these things, they just sell out. So you need to sign up today if you want to reserve a spot. There you go. Check it out. Everydollar.com slash budgeting this Wednesday, August the 9th. The first webinar is free. Jade will be doing it. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of these in the coming weeks. I mm-hmm. uh, will be letting you know. And you need to get in on this one if you want to learn how to budget with Jade on every dollar. It's good stuff. Right. Things are happening out there. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Aaron is with us in New York City. Hi, Aaron. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you guys? We're Better than good. we deserve. What's up? Hi. So I have kind of a two-part question. So my first question is, I recently got engaged, and my fiance and I are getting married next June. Congratulations. Looking, thank you so much. We're looking for an apartment for when we get married, but we are trying to do that without a credit score. Good. So I know, so we've been looking for apartments and some apartments are saying they need credit history or credit scores. And we're just wondering how to do that without credit score. Like what are the steps we need to take in order to get that done? I don't know how prevalent it is in New York City, but in other cities that we've done research where we've actually called, like we'll go and call 20 different apartment complexes, we find that uh, 75 to 80 percent of them don't require anything. The other 25 percent may require a credit score or a deposit, Mm -hmm. an extra deposit. Um, But if you say, hey, look, we're newly married. These are the jobs. You show them what you've got. You apply for the apartment. They do not solely make the decision to rent an apartment on credit score. Now, I'm not positive in New York City, if that's actually true, but I'm going to guess and say if the rest of the nation is 75 percent, at least 50 percent of the apartments there, you can do it with. Again, they're looking. What, okay. what a landlord is looking for is can you pay the rent? Right. If you find one yeah. that has a brain, and you tell them, "Hey, I don't have a bad credit score. I just don't have a credit score," and you're able to show them what you earn. I do. Yeah, we do make this much money. Yeah. Uh, we are getting yeah. married, and you know, this is what we're going to be making as a household. We easily can cover this. Mm-hmm. What's your normal deposit? We can definitely do that, and so on. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, but if you find someone that only is going to make the decision on credit score, you found a corporate goob. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, right. They got a yeah. boss. They got a boss in another city somewhere. They're not yeah. making any decisions. They're they're a, they're at the very bottom of the food chain, and they don't get to make any. And somebody's just put in place a random policy. You probably don't want to rent there anyway. That's true. That's true. Okay. But you All can right. you can and find then, them. Okay. Cool. And thanks for the call, man. We appreciate it. So Anthony O'Neill, that was a Ramsey personality. Yeah. sat and uh, called. It's on YouTube. Uh-huh. And he sat when he was here and called multiple apartment complexes and said, hey, I'm moving to Nashville. I'm a single young guy. Mm-hmm. I got no credit score. I got a job. I can show you my income. And they said, sure, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And this idea that you have to have a credit score to rent an apartment, it, by and large, is just false, y'all. Yeah. That's just, that's just one of those lies people tell so that they justify going in to get a credit card and justify yeah. going into buying a car they can't afford, meaning they took out debt on it. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact is, and we do have to highlight this, sometimes when you choose to have a debt-free lifestyle, the way you're treated is unfair. Like, it's not fair to say, well, if you don't have a credit score, we're going to make you pay a little bit more first and last month's rent. That's, that, that's not fair, but sometimes there is a slight price that you pay. Yeah. For choosing to have that debt-free lifestyle. Yeah, I'll give you another example. And this one still ranks, reeks, ranks among the things that reeks. But, you know, <laughs> um, so if you, have no, if you have no credit score, you're going to pay, in a lot of cases, a higher premium on your car and homeowner's insurance. Mm. You know why? Because these goobs did a little bitty tiny study in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania, about... 20 years ago that showed that people that had no that had bad credit had a higher claims rate on their insurance in the event of a wreck or in the event of a, they had a higher claims rate on homeowners and on car insurance well no kidding 
But hello, how about, you know, so I'm worth several hundred million dollars. I don't have anything but a big old pile of cash, and I'm a higher risk because I got a low credit score. Well, that's dumber than crap. <laughs> of course that's stupid. Of course I've got a lower claims rate. I've got to carry $5,000 deductibles on most of my stuff mm-hmm. because I can carry that much and keep my cost of my insurance down. You know, it's yeah. just, but this, just stupid. Because they took this stupid little tiny study and extrapolated from that. Now, the whole freaking insurance industry, just about, which is a bunch of lemmings all following each other off a cliff, (laughs) um, they all go and line up and go, everyone that doesn't have a credit score (laughs) now has the equivalent of bad credit, and so we're going to charge you more. When in reality, people don't have a credit score probably have money. Probably, and are going to have yeah. lower. If you'd have done a real study, a detailed research, mm-hmm. and the industry accepted that. But no, what it is, it's freaking insurance companies with an excuse to charge more is what yeah. it is. Now, did I get through with my little rant? When yes, you, I did. Well, when you said rank, what did you say? It reeking, ranks. Reeking it ranks rank. among things that reek. I thought you were going to talk about rental cars. Because they want you to pay a credit. Rental cars, they are say. Are they charging more? Well, if you use your credit card. They uh-huh. say you have to use a credit card, but if you choose to use a debit card, you're more risky. And oh, yeah. so you end up oh, paying yeah. more. Well, you know why? We found this out when we were, we had Dollar rent a car for a long time. I we remember. had the Dollar rent a car yes. studios back in the day. And Dollar went and did a full thing. And they agreed for a while. Now, they all went broke with when they, you know, to that, with the uh, Fauci quarantine. They all lost everything. And they, <laughs> they got, got to, they, got, they all got the opportunity to go into bankruptcy, <laughs> right? So after bankruptcy, they came out and, and the new guys running dollar looked up and went back to the old ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that we had to not be the dollar stu- studio anymore. So um, now we're the pod studio and we're proud of that. Love pods. The, um, and that, they don't take credit cards either. So, um, <laughs> no, they probably do. But anyway, the uh, but Dollar you know, Dollar told us, the Hertz people told us on the inside that the they're these uh, organized crime guys that steal their cars, and they do it in, they're like thousands of them. Uh-huh. And, and it's almost always in Vegas, always use debit cards. And that, it's kind of like the insurance thing. It's, it's this one, one person one little screwing thing, up for all of us. This one little thing. And so they then assume all debit cards because they're so narrow freaking minded. They don't <laughs> understand their own actual data. Wow. Okay. They, don't, they don't do a decent analysis on their own data to realize a regular country boy with a credit card is not, or debit card is not a threat. Yeah. Hello. Wow. But um, now the goobers. But yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's exactly where it came from was organized crime using debit cards to <laughs> steal cars okay. in Vegas. And that then that's where the whole industry pulled the thing from. They used that they used again bad research, bad data leads to bad or bad analysis of good data leads to bad <laughs> problems. Uh, problem. Crazy, crazy. It reeks, it crazy. ranks. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's not good. This is the Ramsey Show. Jade Walshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Brad and Brittany are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. How's it going? Better than we deserve. Where do y'all live? Uh, Fishers, Indiana. Which is near? About 20 minutes north of Indianapolis. Indy. Okay. Well, welcome to Nashville. Good to have you. And how much debt have you guys paid off? $277,000. Whoop, whoop. How long did this take? <laughs> about four years. Good for you. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, started out at two thirty, and then went up to three hundred combined plus bonuses. Way wow. to go! What do y'all do for a living? 
I'm a uh, sales manager for a medical device company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I um, am in sales as well and uh, in medical as well. Okay, wow. Well, you guys are killing it. Way to go. (laughs) So what kind of debt was your 277? Uh, It was our mortgage. Let's go! (laughs) Looking at weird people. Really weird. I (laughs) love it. What's this house worth? Uh, anywhere between, I would say, five fifty and six hundred. Cool. Let's and go. how much? In, how much in your retirement accounts? Uh, it's it's getting close to a million, Dave. Hey. Yeah. We're, in we're, there alone, or no, 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 no. Oh, so no, you're you guys, but so about five hundred there too. Yeah, a little over five hundred. Okay, yes. so you're a million dollar net worth. Yes. Okay. Baby steps millionaire. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Way to go! Yes. Ding ding! Two wins on the day. I like it. Absolutely. How old are you two? I'm thirty eight. Thirty seven. Come wow. on. I got two young kiddos here. Wow. That are a part of it. Love it. <laughs> love on. it. Love it. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. So did you guys grow up rich? Uh, no, we did not. No, we did how, not how much did you inherit? Uh, none. 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 So this is you just gutted this out. Absolutely. Yeah. Which Wait. is, by the way, how most people do it. But <laughs> yeah, in case okay. you didn't know. But yeah. Way to go, guys. Yeah, Way we grew, to you. grew up with uh, two hardworking families mm-hmm. that instilled good values and mm-hmm. worked uh, very hard their whole life mm-hmm. would give anybody the shirt off their back but we uh learned that and learned that we needed to really uh get down and and work hard to be able to accomplish what we yeah need to. you know the best gift you can give your kids is teach them where money comes from absolutely work absolutely yeah teach them to work yeah, you, you know send them to the salt mines early <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh i'm you know, kidding you, i'm kidding kids it's okay you're yeah, not joking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, we learned at a really Grandpa joke. Yeah. <laughs> we learned at a really uh, early age your common sense principles from our parents instilled them in us as well. Ah, too, okay. So. They wow. had common sense before it was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so you what? guys, awesomeness. Tell us about this. Four years ago, what happened? How long y'all been married? Uh, this would be 12 years. 12 years. Okay, so four yes. years ago, you say the mortgage is going down. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I'll tell you two stories, Dave, um, two quick ones. Our, our journey first started when I was at my previous organization. I was coming home from a sales training module or a sales training meeting. And uh, Mandy Hall, who's actually listening here today, um, I was talking to her about paying off our student loan debt and how long it was going to take, which was between the both of us was Mm $70,000. This was about 15 years ago. And she introduced me to Dave Ramsey and the Total Money Makeover. And I think in four days, we both read the book. And then translation, 13 months later, we were consumer debt free, student student debt free. Boom. That was the do nothing, didn't go out to eat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All hands on deck. (laughs) Yep. So then we kind of went in for a little while and kind of trying to figure out where to go not really truly figuring out four five and six yet Mm -hmm. and then we built the house and in October of 2019 we kind of looked at each other and said why do we still have this Mm -hmm. like we don't have any other debt the mortgage yes and we were on a 30-year fixed at the time Mm -hmm. then when COVID hit we've refinanced into a a 15 Mm -hmm. and we just really cranked it out from there from then on out and really just started chunking all of our bonuses on you started Six months before COVID. Six months before COVID. And then COVID. when the quarantine hits, boom, you're game on. Game on. Because medical device, y'all kept working. Yeah, absolutely. You were essential. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, a, there was a period of time we were at home for a little while, but we did get back out there pretty quickly as yeah. well. That's really great. I'm just, the fact that you guys are 37 and 38 years old, paid for home, millionaires, what do you say to that other person who's your age, but they're still deeply in debt? They've still, you know, maybe they haven't even bought a home yet. What would you say to them? Uh, so I would say I, I have a mentor um, that is at my company, and he always says, "Play the long ball." And I, I do feel that with us, we're playing the long ball mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and being patient, which is really a reflective because I, it's hard for me to be patient, him mm-hmm. not so much. Mm-hmm. So um, play the the long ball and being patient is my advice because mm-hmm. it's easy to get caught up in the wants, especially what I call the blackout period of two young kids, <laughs> a house. You know, you're just you're in the thick of it, and right. it's hard to uh, feel like you can catch your breath. Yeah. yeah I know yeah. That's right. Yeah, and, and all all spending is justified in the blackout period. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Not, but we, but we act that way, right? Yeah, you're right. I like that. That's a good, I like that. I've never heard that phrase put that way, but that's period. good. That's oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, and Dave, I said, like, we... We, we always had a goal of being debt free, completely mm-hmm. debt free. And, and for me, like it wasn't necessarily about the wealth journey. It was about the freedom to choose. Mm. And you said something, I saw you live and I think it was either Carmel or Fishers, Indiana a while mm-hmm. back. And mm-hmm. the story that you said was like, you know, if you walk into your job and you got no payments and your boss is a jerk, you can just turn around and walk away. 
Mm-hmm. And when he yells at you, you can say, I got no payments. Mm-hmm. I and, I, and I walked out of that, that, per, uh, that per, uh, presentation and I said, I want that ability to make that choice. That I autonomy. want that choice and that, that autonomy. autonomy. And I love my job. I love my boss. So I don't want to quit or do anything, yeah. but I love having that ability and that freedom to make that choice if we need to. You know, the weird thing is, is when you can quit, A, you usually don't want to, mm-hmm. and B, you, you, you kind of walk different. Yeah. And so they treat you different. Absolutely. It's like, I, I don't walk like a victim, you know, <laughs> yep. and it's, it's, de- it changes your body language. Yeah. It does. It changes everything. You're going to be a whole lot better at sales now. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be incredible because you got nothing. You got this. Now it's just a game. Yep. yep. There's yep. no, yep. there's no need. It's just a game. It's fun. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was contacting the president of a major company, uh, last week about us doing business and they just emailed back and told me to pound sand and it's just, <laughs> a, you know, it's just a game. It's just yeah. a game. Right. And it's just fun. Nope. It yeah. was fun. That yeah. happened at the last commercial break yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it's just fresh. It, what, whatever you know next <laughs> right it's, nope. it's hilarious so very cool you that guys so how cool. does it feel to be millionaires at 37 freedom and free. Free. grass feels different yes. <laughs> and, and that's what i say it is the grass does feel different when you pay your house off and you walk outside bare feet so your advice is play the long game if someone says how do you get out of debt is that the same advice or is there something set a goal set a goal and go after it yeah so and and then also too like i mean we wouldn't have been able to accomplish this if we weren't on the same page yeah. right? i mean we've yeah. all we've throughout our entire journey through the student loan crisis that we had and then you know paying off our mortgage we had an we had a so, goal the entire time I'm curious about that. That's a really good point. And, you know, most everybody says that. Um, and it's true. Um, now, you guys, you were on the same page. We read the book, both of us, 48 hours, 13 months. Boom, we knock it out. Mic drop, we're done with that debt. And then we went a little ish. When you decided to go game on again, were both of you on the same page still? He had a lot of come to Jesus moments with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were so extreme and that was pre-kids and I was like I want to be able to give them experiences still mm-hmm. be able to live while we're getting out, while quotes. we're paying off the house. Yes, yeah. and he's like, Brittany, no, we can do this. Let's stay focused and we still, that's why I think we, we, we would have done it a lot sooner. We still, what I would say, we took the kids on a trip. You're supposed to it's, at that yeah. day, so, by the way. Baby step well, six, intentional, baby step not six intense. is not intense. Yes. It's intentional. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Dave, we're we got couches in our house that are 20 years old and she's yeah. just itching to you know, replace time. them. <laughs> Thank you. Will you tell hey, him? Come on, Brad. <laughs> it's time, Get Brad. Brittany a couch. You're a millionaire. If you knew. Come on, man. It's been years of me asking. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you're leaving here to go buy a new couch. That's it. More than likely. Yeah. More than likely. Yeah. On the way home. <laughs> hey, we've got so the uh, live and give bundle for you. Most of it's going to be give for you guys. The Total Money Makeover book, an extra one, a, t- a financial peace membership, and of course the Baby Steps Millionaires book you our baby steps major so proud of you bring the kiddos up let's introduce them get their ages and do our debt free scream what are their names and ages this is Kate, mm-hmm. who is eight, mm-hmm. and this is Jake, who is six. I love <laughs> that. You ready? Way to go, you guys. All right, 277000 paid off. House and everything. That makes them Baby Steps millionaires at 37, 38 years old. Did it in four years, making 230 to $300. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, count it down. Three, Three two, two, one. We're Three, debt-free. Two, Wow! Hey, those little kids right there, they, their whole lives are changed. I know, that's right. Their kids' lives are changed. Mm-hmm. That's called, that was the sound you heard, those little kids screaming? That's the sound of a family tree change. That's it. Those people are heroes. Yeah. Very cool. Good stuff. This Good is stuff. the Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 9, 10. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the invariable mark of wisdom is to see the miraculous in the common. 
I like it. Linda is in Los Angeles. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. How are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Okay, my question is twofold. First, I want to, I'm interested in paying off my mortgage, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if it makes sense to do that if I know that later on down the line, I'm going to sell the property. Yes. And then the other part is when I do get ready to sell it, am I going to have a problem because the property is inside of the living trust and my husband passed away? The loan was in his name. So now the loan is in the estate of his name, but the trust is in both of our names. So will I have a problem selling it if the deed is not going to be coming in my name, but it's going to come in his name? The deed will come from the trust. The trust is the owner of the property, and the trust will sign for the deed. Who is the trustee on the trust? I am. You're the beneficiary. I'm the beneficiary. I'm, I'm the tr- I believe I'm the. Tr- it says I'm the trustor, the trustee, and the beneficiary since he passed. You're all three. I was joint wow. trustor. Yes. Okay. Um, in most states, that can't be, but it could be in California. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Okay. Oh. Okay. But usually, you can't be the trustee and the beneficiary on a trust. Typically, that'd be like a conflict of interest, huh? Yeah. Usually. That, oh. Typically, that doesn't. But it, but it could be. I'm, I'm not. I'm not an attorney. Okay. But either way, a trust is an entity, and the trust is the owner of the property, and the trust will transfer the deed to the buyer, and the trustee will sign the deed on behalf of the oh. trust. Okay, and it doesn't matter that the mortgage has the nothing loan. to do with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the ownership is in the deed, the warranty deed. The mortgage is just a lien on the property. And if the mortgage is paid off or not paid off, it doesn't matter. The mortgage would get paid off in the event of a sale, obviously, or if you have paid it off earlier, which is what I'm going to recommend you do, go ahead and pay it off. Oh, okay. And then, and then you're yeah, free to make okay. decisions because you're not losing the money yeah. when you pay it off. You get the money out when you sell the house, right? Yes. It's not like the money's yes. evaporating. We're just we're just investing in, in, into the. We don't have any debt payments anymore. And then when you you know, and so you might want to follow back up with the attorney that did the living trust okay. with just a phone call and go, hey, pull this file up. I'm a little confused. Uh, exactly okay. who signs the deed? Am I the trustee and the beneficiary? Is that how this works? And ask him, uh, just for, or her, just to be sure what you've gotten yourself into there. It's not a big deal though. It's not a problem. I mean, I had, we had a, our last residence, uh, our current one isn't, but our last one was in a trust and, uh, my wife was the trustee and, um, I was the beneficiary, <laughs> <laughs> meaning okay. she was in control. Hello. That's what that means. Okay. Uh, but she, yeah, we sold that property and she signed the deed. It wasn't a problem <laughs> on okay. behalf of okay. the trust, but neither one of us personally were the owner anymore. So you don't own the property anymore. The trust owns the property. Got it. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay. Thank now, you. So I'm much. not an and attorney, so but I, everything I told you is just right. right. Double check it with your attorney. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And pay off your house. Good question. That Tom good. is in Philadelphia. Hey, Tom, what's up? Hey, gang. Thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. How can we help? I'm Matt. I'm married 14 years to my wife. We have two young kids, and it has recently come to my attention that she is very unhappy in the marriage. She thinks that we have been hyper-focused on retirement and investing for retirement, and we're missing out on today as we plan for tomorrow. So I can give you a quick breakdown of our numbers and what the portfolio looks like. The main question is, do we sell a two-unit rental property that we have, which would, for the most part, eradicate all of our debts with the exception of our mortgage and give us much more latitude to do the things that she wants to do that, frankly speaking, I happen to be in agreement with after sitting down and talking about it. I feel like we're missing out on too much. What is your net Uh, worth? Well, let's see. We have 
An $800,000 house with a $340,000 mortgage at 2.7%. Okay, that's 500 k What's the rest of your net worth? We have 100000 out in a home equity line of credit. We have $30,000 in credit card debt. And what do you have in investments, Tom? <clears throat> we have a two-unit rental property, which is paid off. And it's and worth what? Is, What's it worth? Between, between two hundred and fifty and two hundred and eighty. Okay, all right. We have five hundred thousand in four hundred one k. We've got fifty thousand in a Roth IRA, mm-hmm. and we have a second rental property <clears throat> that we just bought last year, which we still have a mortgage on that for about one hundred and eighty. What will it bring if you sold it? I'm sorry. Say that again. What, what would it, it bring what if you it sold bring? it? About the same, about two fifty to two eighty, somewhere in that yeah. range. Hmm. Uh, we also have twenty five thousand just sitting in in liquid funds, ten in, in a checking account, another fifteen in a. In okay, a so she five, su- a she's suggesting. TV. What do you make? Combined, we make two hundred thousand. Okay, she's um, suggesting that you clean up. Uh, some of the chaos mm-hmm. and enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. Um, yeah, I mean, if we sold the if we sold the two unit, uh, yeah. we, like I said, and we you sold the other the other house, you're not making all, any money on the one you just bought's not got any cash flow because you got no equity in it. Right. Well, I mean, it, it's it, just it a, a it's good, a, it's a bigger a problem than it is a blessing. I love real estate. I don't like that house with what you owe on it. Okay. So I'd I'd sell both rentals. And I'd clean up the mess and be mm-hmm. debt-free. And let's put yourself on a written budget that you and your wife agree to that includes enjoyment. That's what I needed to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. debt, 100% <laughs> debt-free. So debt 100% debt debt-free, debt debt free, no rentals. You make 200000 a year, and you can put enjoyment in your budget and still become very wealthy. There's no reason you can't do both. You've got the numbers to do both. All right. Right. But the hyper focus is like she doesn't feel like she's got a vote in this process. And if y'all will start doing a monthly budget where she has a vote in, that'll help uh, the marriage discussion, too. Yeah. Right. So right. Y- y- you're a you're a go getter numbers guy. Am I right? You are right. Yeah. And uh, how old I'm are just, you? I'm 46. She's 40. Yeah. Okay. So when I was in my 20s, I was the go-getter numbers guy, and we owned real estate. My wife even knew, never even knew about. Not because I hid it from her, but I didn't need her opinion. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. You know what? She says that's the worst seven years of our marriage, till we till I went broke because I was stupid, and then when we started working together, we have a lot better marriage. And my success rate on investments went way up because turns out she's got a good common sense. Yeah. I get a few, it feels like she's kind of just along for the ride, but she, she she's needs not voice. getting to yeah. participate. She needs a vote. And yeah. when she gets a vote and then she says, hey, I want to build wealth and go on vacation, uh, your life's getting ready to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And you can do both, man. Yeah. You know, I'd clean up these little rentals and clean up. Use a rental. I'm with you. I think you got a good plan, Tom. And I love that you love your wife so much that you love her more than your plan, mm-hmm. your old plan. And so you're going to turn away from the hyper thing and knock it out. I like it, man. You're a good guy. Yeah, that's good. You love your wife. You're willing to uh, abandon your little pl- get your former game plan and develop a new one to hit her. But also, you don't have to completely abandon the goal of being responsible and of building wealth. I think you can do both. Absolutely. And, uh, you, and you'll be amazed. Jump on every dollar and start using the every dollar budget. And the two of you doing your budget together, you're going to love this. You really are. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Austin, Ben, James, Zach, and Andrew in the booth. The Booth Dudes doing the show. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality. Good work today. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.